Hey team, Matt Sarberer here. Today's class is on land navigation and map reading. So we're go, going through all these things here uh, one at a time, all right? So let's get started. Marginal information. So the biggest thing here obviously is the marginal information is uh, down here uh, at the bottom. Most logical place to begin uh, is in the marginal information, the symbols, and then you, it has useful details about the map, where they're located, and everything is explained. Sheet name, top center, and then the lower left as well. Sheet numbers, bold print, upper right margin, lower left margin, used as a reference number to link specific maps to overlays, operations, orders, and plans. Uh, so the big thing with this is you'll have your sheet number uh, series, all that good stuff. So you can actually put all these maps together uh, and make a, a an even bigger map. Series name, bar scales, uh, rulers to convert map distance to ground distance. Contour interval note states the vertical distance between adjacent contour lines of the map. When supplementary contours are used, the interval, interval is indicated. So the contour interval is 20 meters, and we'll talk about contour lines a little bit later on. Again, a, uh, same deal for, for the maps, the adjoining sheets diagram. It tells you where exactly the adjoining sheets uh, and their corresponding uh, numbers are. So the declination diagram, very important here. Uh, it is the relationship of true north, grid north, and magnetic north. Grid north being your map, magnetic north being your compass, and then true north obviously being north north. Grid reference box, located lower, lower left margin, contains instructions for composing a grid reference. And then your legend. Legend is low, the lower left margin, kind of tells you what all the uh, things are on the map, you know, uh, roads, uh, railroads, churches, highways, etc. So the reason why it's on there is because the symbols are not always the same on every map. So colors on a military map, you have black, red, brown, blue, and green. Black is man-made features such as buildings, roads, uh, surveyed spot elevations, and then labels as well. Uh, red, brown, colors red and brown are combined to identify cultural features, relief features, um, spot elevations, and elevations such as contour lines, right? So red, brown is your, your contour lines. Identify, the blue identifies hydrography, hydrography, however you say that word, or water features such as lakes, swamps, rivers, and drainage, and then green is vegetation. Brown uh, identifies relief features. Uh, on older maps, it's contour lines. And then red classifies cultural features such as populated areas, main roads, boundaries on older maps. And then on occasion, other colors are used and it will be indicated in your marginal information. So that's your marginal information. Move on to terrain features on a map. So you'll hear this question asked a lot uh, and you'll probably see this on a test or two or three. Uh, five major terrain features, hill, valley, ridge, saddle, and depression. A way that we teach uh, people to know it is hidden valley ranch salad dressing, right? Seems kind of weird, but if you like ranch, uh, it'll remind you of the five major terrain features, H, hill, V, valley, R, ridge, S, saddle, D, depression. Again, hidden valley ranch salad dressing. The three minor terrain features are draw, spur, cliff, and two supplementary terrain features are cut and fill. A hill represented by contour lines forming concentric circles 
You can use your fist to help remember and visualize, visualize terrain features. A hill looks like one of the knuckles on your fist. All right, so the hilltop is annotated here as the X. A valley usually have man maneuver room and contain a stream or river. Valleys are depicted as contour lines forming a U. The lines extend, the lines tend to parallel a stream before crossing. A ridge is depicted as contour lines forming a U or a V. The closed end of the contour points away from the high ground. A ridge is a series of connected hills, as you can see here in this picture. So this would be a ridge line. A saddle can be either lower ground between two hills or a break in a level crest. A saddle is depicted as an hourglass, just right here. A depression is depicted by closed contour lines that have tick marks pointing towards the low ground. A depression is a major terrain feature. Draw, depicted as contour lines shaped like a V with the point of the V towards the head or the high ground of the draw. Now we'll show you uh, bigger pictures of all of these as we go along. Spurs often form, so the opposite of a draw, right? So the spurs formed by parallel streams cutting draws down a ridge. U or V shaped contour lines with the V pointing away from the high ground. Cliff depicted by contour lines drawn very close together as you can see here where they all meet up. And then you have the tick marks pointing towards the lower ground. Supplementary terrain features are cut and fill. Uh, both man-made features, a cut is a result from cutting through raised ground, usually to form a level bed for a road or a railroad track. As you can see here, we have a cut and then we have a fill. So here, filling in, uh, putting in some, some more dirt or rock to make sure that we have a flat ground for that railroad and then cutting through uh, that land there and putting the railroad down. All right, so interpretation of terrain features, I'm just gonna go on down the line. As you can tell, these hills are being highlighted. A valley, all right, normally we have some streams or something going through valleys. Ridge, all right, again, ridge line, ridge line, ridge line. Saddles, all right, normally in between two hills. Depressions, a cliff, remember these Contour lines meeting up and making one. And then the tick marks pointing outwards or wherever the uh, cliff is. Draw with the V or the U pointing up towards the higher ground. Spur the U or the V pointing down towards the lower ground. Cut is cutting into the terrain and then fill is filling in some, some terrain. All right, so those are the terrain features uh, on a map. We're gonna determine a location on a map. So you determine your location by relating the terrain features on the ground to those shown on the map, and you can determine your location. So really what's happening right here is you can see they are orienting the map to the ground. So they're making sure that as they look at their map, they're looking, as they look at the ground itself, they're looking at the map and putting it towards uh, that way. So as you can see how it turned around. 
All right. We're turning a little bit here. All right, so now we have our map orientated. Oop, there it is. All right, orient a map to the ground by terrain association, which is very similar to what just happened. Uh, first, you wanna make sure that your map is pointed north. And then you turn your compass, boom. And now your map is, is orientated. And we'll talk about this one more time. All right, so your map, if you're reading your map, uh, the top of the map is always north, the way it's, the way it's made, written. Um, and then you put your uh, compass on there straight all right use that line right there to line up your compass and then you turn everything together till you hit north all right so north is that way and now your map is orientated all right determining grid coordinates on a map so vertical lines, top to bottom, horizontal lines, left to right. These lines form small squares, a thousand meters on each side, all right? They're called grid squares, all right? So 1,000 meters, 1,000 meters, 1,000 meters, 1,000 meters. Uh, the lines that form the grid squares are numbered along the outside edge of the map. No two grid squares will have the same number. So here it will tell you if for a four digit grid, 0282, that will give you a 1000 meter precision. precision. So uh, if you're looking for something, a spot in particular, uh, that might not be the grid uh, that you would give somebody. Six digit grid will get, get you within 100 meters. An eight digit grid will get you within 10 meters and then a 10 digit grid will get you within one meter. Uh, so the, the higher uh, the grid count is, the more precision there is to you finding an actual point. All right, so a few, a four digit grid, obviously is just four digits. A six digit grid, boom, will take you to a certain location. Go through there. All right, so we're looking for point A. The most accurate way to determine the coordinates of a point on a map is to use a coordinate scale. So you don't have to use imaginary, imaginary lines because you can come up with those exact coordinates. Grid square 0282. All right, so we're gonna start from this corner right here. So it's at line 02 and then eight two, all right. We're gonna use a compass here and we're gonna line up with the horizontal line and then the vertical line, all right? Making sure that it's flush. We're gonna move, so you wanna make sure that you read right and then up. So zero two, and then when you slide it over, it's gonna be on the, you see that six right here or five nine, that's really, really uh, on your eye or somebody else's eye, it could be five eight, five nine or, or six zero. Um, hopefully you, you get it as close as possible. So zero two five nine, and then you're gonna read up. Eight two looks like three two. All right, so zero two five nine eight two three one, and that's the eight digit coordinate for point A. So the two letter uh, sweet, uh, one thousand meter square identifier is going to be uh, in your marginal information. All right, so. 
you're gonna when you give your grid out you're gonna want to make sure that you put that grid zone identifier with your grid so if it's on the EH or the EG whatever the case may be you're gonna give that grid out so EG 02598231 we're gonna determine elevation so the maps are flat obviously uh, but the ground is not so to account for this we measure land elevations contour lines uh, are on your maps to help you uh, determine elevation so without even saying words this thing just did everything for me and we're going to go back and we're going to do it all over again. There we go. So uh, the other thing to go with this is you have, we talked about earlier about contour line interval, which is in your marginal information. So it'll tell you uh, from each line to each line, how many meters it is. So very important for you to know that because you're not always gonna have these numbers on your map. Uh, you might have them uh, at the hilltop uh, for the most part, uh, but you may not have all these other ones. So if your hilltop says 160, and then there's just a line here, a line here, a line here. You can do the math of taking 20 meters away or 40 meters or 50 meters, whatever the marginal information tells you uh, that the contour line interval is. So if our contour line interval is 20, we're at 200 here. You're going to get 220, 240, 260, 280, and then 300. Again, your contour interval is 20 meters. Supplementary contours is 10 meters. Uh, so the, con the supplementary uh, contour lines uh, might be uh, a little smaller or have uh, tick marks or dashes. So the, uh, um, a way to measure the hilltop, right? So we've got 300 meters plus 20 is 320, 340, 360, all right? And then obviously the middle of the hilltop, you're gonna add 10 meters uh, as, and it'll give you 370 meters. And then same thing, if you're going for a depression, you're taking it down, it'll take it down to 230 meters. All right, azimuth. All right, so here we're gonna talk about shooting an azimuth. Uh, you're gonna use your compass to determine or follow an azimuth. All right, so the two methods of uh, using your azimuth are compass to cheek or the center hold method. As you can see in this picture here, this. Uh, Young cadet is using the compass to cheek method. Position the eyepiece at a 45 degree angle to the base. Place your thumb through the thumb loop. Form a steady base with your third and fourth fingers. You gotta look through it. All right, I mean, I can explain this all day, uh, but unless you have a compass, uh, to use it's not really going to help so um, when we are in person obviously we will explain how to do these the next one is the center hold method basically just holding it out this this one is uh, accurate within 10 degrees uh, the reason why it's accurate within 10 degrees is kind of because you're like you want to use this when you're actually walking um, 
to kind of point you in that right direction. Uh, other than that, you want to use that compass to cheek method to get you uh, as close as possible. So you're going to first lightly plot the location of the two points on the map using a pen pencil. Draw a straight edge. Right, center your protractor over the first point. All right, so centered on the point, then it crosses at 62 degrees. All right, so that's 62 degrees from point A to point B. So if you're walking from here to here, uh, you're gonna be walking at 62 degrees. Now, you're gonna go to your, you're gonna convert your grid azimuth to magnetic azimuth, right? And then the same thing goes for vice versa. If you're converting from grid to magnetic, you gotta do a certain thing, right? So here it tells you 21 degrees. So you're gonna, if you're going from magnetic to grid, you're gonna add 21 degrees. If you're going from grid to magnetic, you're gonna subtract 21 degrees. All right, if this is a huge, huge critical step uh, when you are conducting land navigation, because if you don't do this, you're gonna end up in the wrong location. So ensure that you know this. This question about uh, your declination diagram will be asked more than once. All right, back azimuth. So suppose you're heading 65 degrees, but you need to come back to where you started. Instead of replotting your points, just simply reverse your direction 180 degrees to find your back azimuth. All right, so if you are, if it's uh, less than 180, you're gonna add 180. If it's greater than 180, you're gonna subtract 180. So suppose my grid is 62. I'm gonna calculate my back azimuth and it's gonna tell me 242. So if it's less, we're adding 180. All right, we're gonna do this all over again and we're gonna say, oh no. We're gonna say my grid is 202, calculate. And it's gonna subtract 180 because I'm greater than 180. All right, distance. Measuring distance, say bar scales is a ruler printed on the map and used to convert distances on the map to actual ground scales. All right, so here's, here's the deal. So you have your primary scales and then you have the extension scales. The extension scales will kind of give you smaller scaled uh, distances. What a lot of people do is they'll start from way back here uh, and then measure all the way to the 3,000 and say, well, I got 3,000. In all actuality, you have 4,000 because the zero starts right here. So you gotta ensure that you uh, are paying attention to that, all right? Moving on. So you're gonna align, you see how that worked out right there? Uh, the right side measurements of the nearest thousands on the left side counts of the hundreds. Imagine one of the extension blocks into tenths and estimate which tenth to the left side is at. Just letting this play out a little bit so you can see it all over again. And whoop, there it is. All right, so straight line distance, point A to point B, very simple. You just boom and boom, and then you take it down to your scale. So 3,000 meters. Now, if you're determined curved road distance, watch how they are turning the paper. Two thousand five hundred and eighty meters from point A to point B. I'm gonna do that one more time. Two 
and boom goes the dynamite. And intersection resection, very important here. Two very important things for you to know. All right, so intersection is using when you know two known locations and then you're trying to find an unknown location. So if you know the grid points to these two points, um, you're gonna draw, you're gonna do the uh, line or grid azimuths from each one and then where the lines intersect is where the unknown location is found on the map. And now you can find that exact grid coordinate for that location. We'll run it back one more time. Again, convert magnetic azimuth to grid azimuth, right? Use your declination diagram. Next one shoots it. Draw your lines where they intersect that is where that location is, right? So that's intersection. Resection is used to locate your position on a map by using at least two well-defined locations that can be pinpointed on the map. So if you are here, you can use the radio tower and the windmill, get those locations, shoot your azimuth, and then convert the magnetic azimuth to grid azimuth. Again, convert using the declination diagram. And then you do the back azimuth, which is either add or subtract 180 degrees. So you get 110 degrees and 65 degrees, which would give you your location. And now you have found your location on a map using two known points. Modified resection. You can easily determine where you are on the linear terrain feature. A linear terrain feature could be a road, railroad, stream, ridge, etc. Let's say you knew that you were traveling on Highway 99 but didn't know exactly where on Highway 99 you were. You see the tower, you shoot your azimuth, you convert your, az your magnetic azimuth to a grid azimuth and then you draw it on the map. You convert, or you do your back azimuth. So you draw the line long enough so it crosses the linear terrain. Now you can plot the exact point of your unknown location. Right, so it's just a modified, modified way to do it with only one point. And that is pretty much it. Um, I will send out a quick quiz. Uh, hopefully you uh, don't have any questions. Or, I mean, I'm sure you will have questions, but uh, if you do have any questions, uh, please give us a ring. Uh, we are either by email, by Slack, phone call, whatever you need, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll assist you in your land navigation test.